Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to St Andrew's Church. It's really great that you can join us, uh, all those who are watching on Facebook and YouTube. And if you're watching this later, you're very welcome too. So we're going to have our usual service. We've got some worship. We have a reading, and prayers and a sermon this morning as well. And we'll finish with communion. So it's great that we can come together in this way. You'll be aware that our building is closed. Our church is alive and active. A new thing that's starting this week is our weekly prayer meeting, which we used to do before the lockdown every Wednesday. We're aware that lots of prayer has been going on in, in different ways throughout the past few weeks. But we thought it'd be nice to reinstate a regular pattern. So on Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m., there's going to be a church prayer meeting on Zoom. So I'll send out the invitation for this via the Facebook uh, church family page. I'll also send out an email. So if you're able to join us for that prayer meeting, please do. If you're not able to join us but would like to send in some prayer requests, then you can reply to that email or send us a message and we'll make sure those prayer requests get included. The prayer meeting will take a similar format as the traditional prayer meeting did. We'll have a few minutes at the beginning just to say hello to each other and to mention any prayer requests. We'll open with a song of worship and then we'll spend probably 20, 25 minutes uh, praying. So if you'd like to join us for that on Wednesday at 2 p.m., uh, please do. I'm going to hand over to Rachel now, who's got a notice about Sunday Club. Hi, everyone. It's Rachel here, um, and I'm one of the leaders at St Andrew's Sunday Club. Just to let you know that we've got another Sunday Club online available on the St Andrew's YouTube page. Uh, today, we'll be talking about how incredible God's kingdom is being grown from such a tiny mustard seed. So if you've uh, got any children who are primary school aged, then please tag along. I look forward to seeing you there. So see you later. Thank you, Rachel. So uh, final thing to say is that our 11 o'clock coffee time uh, over on Zoom will be happening again this morning. So please do join us again. The links for that have been sent out by email and are on the Facebook group at 11 o'clock over on Zoom for coffee and chat. And finally, to say this morning's reading is Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 43. So if you've got your Bibles there, you might want to get them open and ready on Luke chapter 24 uh, for this morning's reading, which Beck will be bringing to us later. But let's start with a moment to pause and to pray before we begin our sun worship. There's been lots of phrases going around uh, the media and in people's conversations uh, during this time. Things like these are strange times we're living in, unprecedented times difficult times and also people have been saying things like we're all in the same boat and I was hearing somebody on the radio saying that actually that's not quite true we might all be in the same storm but actually we're kind of all in different boats I was speaking to somebody yesterday who was saying that for them the lockdown has been a time when they've they've never had so much time off work and they've never felt so much rest and peace for other people who I know who are working they can feel very stressed and overwhelmed some people who are at home can feel stressed and overwhelmed some people are very lonely and wish they could have more company. Some people uh, feel trapped in their houses with their family and, and desperate to get out. So we're all in different situations. And I think we need to have grace for all of that, to know that we're all going through through different things. And it, it's all allowed and it's all going to feel strange at times. Um, and so we need grace for one another and, and remember that there's grace from God. So let's take that into our, our opening prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you that you are with us in these difficult times that you are with us in this storm. And we all may be experiencing this in different ways. Lord, help us to be kind to one another and to be kind to ourselves. Recognising that we're going to have good days and bad days or good hours and bad hours even within a day. Lord, help us to rest in your grace and your peace. Help us to do things each day that are going to make us healthier spiritually and physically and in every way. Help us to stay connected when it's right to do that and to give ourselves space when we need space. We pray for those who are really struggling. Lord, if we can help in any way, show us and enable us to help. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us this morning as we do church. Thank you for your peace and your presence. In Jesus name. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to the Hawks family now who are going to lead us in our opening worship. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our worship this morning. 
We're going to be singing two songs. The first one's really well known, sung it lots of times. Second one, some of you may not know, but anyway, we hope you'll enjoy it. It's really a song that fits with our theme this morning of Jesus being in our midst. So our first song, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, be with us now as we worship you. Be in our midst. You are 
are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop. You never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Thank you, Hawks family, for leading us in those songs this morning. So we now have a time of confession. Let's take a moment to open our hearts to God, to bring to him our true selves, knowing that we, we can't really hide anything from God. And yet we come to him knowing that he loves us. And we say together the prayer of confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, 
and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So Beck is now going to lead us in this morning's reading. And I have Ted who's come to say hello. Would you like to say hello? No? Right, go off with Daddy then for a minute. Good morning. Um, and today's reading is taken from Luke. It's chapter 24 and it's verses 36 uh, to 43. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were ter startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Sally is now going to bring today's sermon to us. Hello. The theme for our service today is Jesus in the midst. And we heard last week from Phil about the disciples' encounter with Jesus on the way to Emmaus. Well, they were so excited about meeting Jesus, they rushed to tell the other disciples, the Lord has risen, they said. And as we've heard today, amongst the excitement, Jesus stood among them and said, peace be with you. Such a mixture of emotions in the passages. But today, rushing to the other disciples, wanting to let them know relief, excitement, the hearts were burning. And then startled and terrified when Jesus was amongst them. Is it real? Is it a ghost? Why are you frightened? Jesus asked. Why do you have doubt? And he showed them his hands and his feet. See it as I, myself, touch me. And the disciples at this point, there was joy, there was disbelieving, there was wondering. What a mixture of emotions here. Joy, disbelief, wonder. Jesus said, have you got anything to eat? And he ate a fish and they saw Jesus eating. So excitement, heart burning, startled, terrified. Frightened, doubtful, joyful, disbelieving wonder, all mixed together, all mixed up. And there they were the disciples. They'd see Jesus. He'd been crucified. They'd buried him. And there he was, touch me, eating fish. Jesus was in the midst of them. In the mix of all this emotion, difficult things to understand. Well, there's many times when we feel a range of emotions all at the same time. And there's times when we yo-yo, jump quickly from one emotion to the other. Here we are. So many weeks now, lockdown, managing with social distancing. 
managing with so many changes. It's very natural and very normal in changing in uncertain times. To have such a lot of emotion and to jump and swing between emotion too. And it can be very unsettling. Maybe you feel this. Or someone you know is struggling at the moment. Well, Jesus was in the midst of his disciples, supporting them. And he's in the midst of us now, in our uncertainty, supporting us. Well, let's look at how the disciples managed. They ran, they ran to be together, to share. They were all at different stages of feeling, different stages of believing different stages of managing and that's how we'll be all different all at different stages in how we're managing and the tricky bit is we want to rush off and to be with those we love and worry about but we can't physically but we can through technology we can phone we can facebook we can zoom and so many other techie ways we can be in touch and we can physically help as well at a distance. So looking after each other, being there in whatever way we can, it's something we can do. And it's something the disciples did. And Jesus was with them as well. He was with them and he's with us. Jesus knew how distressed, how confusing everything was for his disciples. He knew how much they missed him. They'd seen him crucified, buried. They'd lost someone they loved. And here he was to reassure them and to be with them. Touch me. Give me something to eat. Jesus was in the midst of them. And he knew they had many emotions, so many mixed emotions. And he knows that we've got mixed emotions too. Because Jesus came to live amongst us. God sent his son Jesus to live on earth. Jesus was born and lived an earthly life. He felt our human emotion. As a child growing up, protected by Mary and Joseph, they were in exile really. He would have felt their worry and their love. And as an older man, on the move, travelling vast distances with his disciples, having encounters with the sick and the outcasts and the poor, the marginalised people. Jesus sought to bring communities together so those on the margins were accepted. He saw raw emotion. He felt it too. He felt emotion, love from his family, from his friends. He felt the raw emotion. He was tortured and brutally killed. Here's Jesus in our reading today, reassuring. Reassuring his disciples in their troubled state. They were feeling joy, wonder, disbelief. They were wondering, how can this be? They must have been thinking that. You know, when things move fast, when routines and comfort and predictability are pulled away from us, it's natural to not believe. I often wake up in the morning and think, was that a dream? No. Sadly, this lockdown is real. Things are real. How can this be? The disciples thought that. How can this be? But Jesus was in the midst of all this and he held his disciples and he holds us. He understood how confusing, how upsetting, how joyful. But yet, how can this be? All mixed together and he reassured. He stood amongst them and said, peace be with you. And peace from Jesus to his disciples and that peace is for us too in all this confusion in this uncertain time 
when I'm feeling very uncertain and very unsure, I often turn to a hymn, really old fashioned hymn, called Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. And it's the last two verses I read. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. The beauty of your peace. Breathe through the heats of our desire, your coolness and your balm. Let sense be done, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire. O oh, still, small voice of calm. O oh, still, small voice of calm. And I pray. Jesus' peace will be with us as it was with the disciples then that it is now with us. Peace in the midst of a turmoil and the mix of feelings as it was for the disciples as it is now for us. Peace which is in the joy and the sadness, peace which is in the doubt and the uncertainty, peace which can calm and still us when we're low and frightened. Jesus knows us and he loves us always and he loves us whatever in the times of doubt and uncertainty, in the times of joy. He loves us if we have a strong faith. He loves us if we are doubtful. His love wraps around all his creation, all his people, every person. Jesus was in the midst of his disciples in all their mix of emotions. Jesus is and always will be in the midst of us, then, now, and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lisa Lee, for those comforting words and reassuring words. So we're now going to head over to, um, to Tina, who's going to lead us in our prayers. And the uh, visuals for Tina's prayers are done by Ian. So we're going to spend some time praying for the world and for the nation, for those we know. Thank you. Everyone. Well, I'm leading prayers this morning and I'm going to use some pictures. But before I do that, just to mention that when I prepare these prayers, I'm always very conscious of leaving out a lot of things, particularly with the world as it is at the moment. There's so much need. But I hope that you will take on board some of the things that I leave out. And just to remind you that if you want to sign up for a slot in the virtual prayer room, that's still running till the end of May. So now let's go to the pictures. Father, we thank you for the beauty of this spring, for the sunshine, and more recently it's the much needed rain. We pray for all who are self-isolating and unable to get out. May they still know the touch of your love, day by day. Thank you for Spring Harvest Online, for the team that made it possible. And thank you that the material will still be on YouTube till the end of May. We give you thanks too that the International Centre has refunded Spring Harvest the cost of their booking and kept their deposit for next year's event. 
And as we look at the conference centre, we pray for all who are now involved with it as a Nightingale Hospital. And looking at this sketch of a, a healthcare worker at the end of a day when she's pretty exhausted, we lift you all those who are in the healthcare sector, whether they work in hospitals or nursing homes, or whether they are people who deliver essential services in our community, often risking their own well-being. We pray, Lord, that you will protect them and guide them. And we pray for all those who are ill and all those who've been bereaved and going through a very painful time. We ask that you will draw near and comfort them. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for our MPs as they lead our nation through this time and have to make very difficult decisions. We pray for their medical advisors and we ask that you will give them all wisdom. We pray for their families and ask your protection and particularly from the barrage of criticism that seems to come day by day. May you bless them and help their efforts, Lord, and guide them with your wisdom. We pray for the Queen, thanking you for her 94th birthday and for her faith in you. And we pray your blessing on her and her family, particularly on William and Kate and the children, seen here clapping the NHS staff. We pray for our church leaders, especially Justin Welby, giving thanks for the telephone line that he has set up for those who are not able to access services online. Thank you too for our local leaders, for Phil and Sally and all that they do. And thank you for other church leaders locally. Thank you for the connection that we have with them too. We pray for Caroline and for Jenny as they pursue their training through these strange days and have to adapt to new methods of ministry and learning. And as we thank you for all the network of support that exists in our nation, we lift up to those nations where that support is not there or only in a very small degree. We pray for Kenya, now suffering floods after the locusts and also the virus. We pray for aid workers trying to help. And we pray for other nations as well in danger of famine. And now as we move to the Middle East, we pray for these ladies from Iran. We pray that you will bless them and all who are following Ramadan at the moment through the Muslim world. May you reveal yourself to them, Lord Jesus, as the way, the truth and the life. We pray particularly for Iran as there are tensions between that country and the US which continue. And we pray also for all those who have suffered through this virus, many more probably than have been reported. We pray for Janaki working in India and we thank you for her visit to us just before lockdown. We pray for her and her team suffering persecution as do most Christians in India. And we pray for provision for their work amongst those on the margins like the leprosy community and the orphans. We pray for your provision for them, Lord. We pray too for Paula and her mum, seen here celebrating Paula's birthday in lockdown. They come under Spain and the lockdown there has been severe, but we pray that you will bless them as they continue to minister to the poor in Gran Canaria. We pray also for the Nobs family in South Africa working with YWAM and their outreach to the poor and marginalised in the townships and we pray for a special initiative that is hoping to raise funds for that work. Similarly, we pray for Gila and for Jerome working with YFC in Neisner 
also working in the townships. And we thank you for the recent visit of Sam and Martin just before lockdown to visit the team there. We pray for, for Martin, Lord, as he continues to connect with YFC workers through the world. We ask that you bless his ministry and particularly as he has to work through many time zones and coordinate things. We thank you for his help with our on online services and we thank you for his uh, contact with the Cyprus team last week and Romania in the coming week. We also bless Lebanon Youth for Christ that he's been in touch with recently and particularly their work with the Syrian refugees in the Bekaa Valley, which continues. We pray for Adrian and Fiona in Switzerland, thanking you for Adrian's work in Geneva with the university students and also for the release of their CD that we are hoping to see soon. Thank you for the song that they've already released and another song that's going to be released fairly soon. Thank you for that blessing to the French speaking world and we ask that it will be used mightily in your service. We pray also for Neil and Joy and the family. We pray particularly for Jake and Grace in the States and Grace as she starts a new job next week. And we pray for Neil as he directs the work of Youth for Christ here in Britain. We pray for the whole team, Lord, that you will give them wisdom as they reach out to young people with a lot of problems often, with anxiety about their future, and some of them for suffering abuse. We pray that you will strengthen the team and their online ministry and joy in her counselling course. Finally, Father, as we look at these rainbows, we pray for all who desperately need hope at this time, whether it's in small businesses or jobs lost, or farmers, many who are affected by the economic consequences of COVID-19. We pray that those who are looking for hope will find it in you, Lord, who are our rock in times of trouble and we thank you for the Easter resurrection hope that we've recently been celebrating. May many come to know you, Lord, as their rock and anchor. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Tina and Ian, for leading us in those prayers. So it's now time to share the peace with one another. In this morning's passage, Jesus comes to the disciples and says, my peace be with you. In Colossians, I was reading this week in Colossians where Paul writes, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And I was thinking about that phrase, the peace of Christ ruling in your hearts, which means that, it, that above any worry or anxiety might, we might have, there is Jesus ruling over those deep emotions. When we talk about our hearts, that's what we're talking about, our deep, deep emotions, that deep centre of ourselves. So before we share the peace with one another, let's just take a moment to receive the peace from Christ. Let's receive that deep peace. Let it rule in our hearts. Let it take charge over our fears and our worries. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Jesus Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You might want to take a moment on social media to share peace with one another or to share peace with those in your household or to think of somebody and pray for them and wish them, uh, pray peace over them. Let's take a moment to do that. <clears throat> so
So we now move on to our Holy Communion prayers. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. the blood of Christ shed for us. Now the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we're going to head back now to the Hawks family who are going to lead us in our final hymn of praise. Thine be the glory. We're going to sing our final song, uh, Thine Be the Glory, Risen Conquering Son. Fantastic Easter season hymn, and uh, particularly the second verse. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Yeah. 
So to our final blessing, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep you in the love and grace of Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining us again this week. Uh, please do join us at 11 if you'd like to for coffee. And a reminder that we've got a midweek prayer meeting at two o'clock. Uh, lots of other information on our social media and on our website. So please do um, go on there to find out more. Hope you have a great week and a blessed week. God bless. Goodbye. Thanks, Martin.